Nick Rutter from McKees37.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to detail the inside of your vehicle from start to finish. The test subject is going to be my wife's 2021 Volkswagen Jetta GLI Autobahn Edition. We love this car because it's quick, it's fun to drive, it has plenty of room for four people and all their stuff, and it has a nice level of luxury features, including leather seats, a nice radio, nice speakers, and it's really comfortable. Now, Inside this vehicle, you have black leather upholstery with sporty red stitching. You have your injected molded uh, rubber dashboard, which has a soft touch material. You have your door panels, which are a harder plastic. And then of course you have your LCD instrument cluster. You have your carpet, and then you have your glass in the side windows, the mirrors, the windshield. So there's a lot of different materials. And in McKees 37, we have a product for every square inch of your vehicle inside and out. So with all these different interior materials, you really wanna choose the right chemical so you don't cause any damage. And so you also obtain the maximum protection. So I'm going to walk you through the steps along with the chemicals, the towels, the brushes, the applicators, and everything else you need to detail the inside of your vehicle. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the stuff from the inside of my wife's vehicle, anything extra, get it out of the way, and then I'm going to vacuum it. My vacuum of choice is the McKees 37 dual action vacuum drive. And the reason why is because this vacuum is both powerful and it's also extremely compact. So the last year I've been in the process of renovating my garage at home, which is where I am now. And it's a two car garage. And frankly, I think I'm one of the few people in the state of Florida that has two cars inside of their two car garage. So space is at a premium, two big toolboxes, my two cabinets, and then I have plenty of stuff in here. The last thing I, I need, actually I don't have any space for it, is a big shop vac style vacuum that takes up a ton of space. So with this guy, it's a canister style. It's about this big around. It stores perfectly in between my workbench here and my microfiber towel cabinet, and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Besides that, it's made in the USA. It's extremely powerful. If it looks familiar, it's because Metropolitan Vacuum Cleaner Company, they build it to our specifications and it has these awesome looking powder coated yellow end caps. Plus there's a ton of different attachments and accessories to reach all the nooks and crannies. And best of all, besides being a vacuum that's both quiet and powerful and compact, it's also a car dryer. So you can remove the vacuum uh, end of it and you'll see a filter in there so you can transform this vacuum into a 4.0 peak horsepower car dryer to blast out water of the cracks and crevices. So stay tuned, hang tight, grab a piece of paper and a pen and start taking some notes for how to detail the inside of your vehicle from start to finish. So before I even get started vacuuming, I like to use compressed air to blow out dirt, debris and dust from all the cracks and crevices. This makes it a lot more effective when you vacuum, that way you're not leaving anything behind. You don't have to have an air compressor, you can get a can of like a keyboard cleaner from the grocery store for six or seven bucks a can and that is compressed there in itself in the form of an aerosol can and you can use that to spray and remove dust from the cracks and crevices but if you don't have an air compressor i'd highly recommend getting one besides keeping your tires inflated properly to save a ton of money on gas they also come in handy for things like this the blowout gun saved me a lot of time because it blasted loose dirt and debris from in between the seams on the seat and also from the hard to reach areas. So it makes life much easier when it comes time to vacuum. Now the next step after I removed the floor mats from the vehicle is I'm going to vacuum using my dual action vacuum drive which is vacuum has several different attachments. You have your long attachment here for the nooks and crannies. You have your soft attachment here for a variety of different surfaces. And then for the detail work, you have this micro attachment, which is flexible. And this will clean in between all the hard to reach areas, like the buttons on the steering wheel and other areas where a larger vacuum or a larger attachment simply wouldn't reach. So this guy, it's smooth, it's powerful, and most importantly, it's quiet.
And here's a tip. If your carpet is really dirty, or if your leather is really dirty, you have a bunch of ground in, like sand particles if you go to the beach, then if you have one of these uh, body massagers here, you can use this on a high speed setting, and the vibration action will work to knock the dirt loose, and it causes it to lift up. It works pretty well. It causes it to bounce around, it's like dirt is dancing on the seat. Once I vacuum the larger areas, like the seat cushions and the carpet, I'll change attachments to one of my softer bristle attachments. That's a brush style. And I'll vacuum the air vents, the instrument cluster here, the center console right here, and then I'm going to swap over to this guy for the real hard to reach areas. So the next thing I like to do is clean the inside windshield along with the inside glass. And the reason I perform this step next is because when I spray the glass cleaner onto the windshield, naturally some of it is going to land on the dashboard. If I clean and protect the dashboard before I do the windshield, then I'm working backwards because the glass cleaner will remove the protectant that I apply. So Crystal Vision glass cleaner is ammonia free, it's perfectly safe, and it's extremely effective, and best of all, it's user friendly. So take your glass cleaner, Spray the windshield thoroughly. And one thing you'll love about Crystal Vision is that it does not have any kind of harsh smell. It's not going to choke you out in the inside of your vehicle. And then I'll take my Glass Master Pro to clean the hard to reach areas where my hand simply wouldn't fit. Which mostly, this is where the dashboard meets the windshield. This tool is worth its weight in gold. Works extremely well. And you can use it to clean the entire windshield, but what I don't like about that is that there's a foam core on the back side where the bonnet attaches and if you clean too much then the foam core actually becomes saturated so even when you change your bonnet your bonnet is still going to get wet with cleaner when you don't want it to so for the rest of the glass i'll take one of our spider glass towels and i'll simply wipe up and down and it would behoove you to wipe the inside glass in one direction and then the outside glass in the opposite direction so if there's any streaks you can identify whether the streaks are on the inside or the outside. And then depending on how dirty your windshield is, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just follow up with two more sprays and flip your spider glass towel to a dry side, and this will be your final buff. Now, if you're working on a customer's vehicle and the windshield has not been cleaned in who knows how long, or if they're a smoker, then it might take more than two or three applications to get that perfectly clear, streak-free finish. I'll take my towel and I'll just wipe off the excess on the dashboard. So one thing you want to be really careful cleaning is this LCD display screen. All new cars have to have a backup camera by government mandate. So most cars have a screen like this, some have a smaller screen, some have a larger screen. The screen if you use the wrong chemical, you can cause some serious damage. And let me tell you, this is not cheap to replace. Crystal Vision Glass Cleaner is safe on this material, and you can also use it to clean your auto-dimming rearview mirror. I would recommend spraying your cleaner directly on the towel instead of saturating the surface. 
And this is something that you really want to clean especially well because, you know, um, you know, dirt and germs and diseases that are on your hands get transferred to your screen. So I'll clean the rear view mirror first just to distribute the cleaner. Flip my towel over. And then I will clean the LCD screen. And besides the LCD screen, this vehicle has the piano black plastic, which is extremely popular. It's safe on that too. And it's not going to leave any streaks or smears or greasiness because again, you want to be really careful what you use on a screen like this. Crystal Vision is perfectly safe as well as the spider glass towel. Big difference already. So you're probably wondering, you know, Nick, at what point are you going to clean the floor liners? Well, I actually bought brand new floor liners in anticipation of this detail. I bought the type that are molded in and they're custom fit for this vehicle. So they cover a lot more of the carpet, which makes future interior cleaning much easier. But normally what I would do is when I remove the floor mats and cargo liners from the vehicle, when I went to vacuum, I would clean them off and I would use our floor mat and cargo liner rejuvenator. That way they're out there drying in the driveway after I've cleaned them and rinsed them off. So when I'm finished, they're dry and ready to be reinstalled. But I have separate videos just for that product that I'll put a link in the description below. But anyway, moving forward, now that everything is vacuumed and the glass is clean, I'm going to use McKee's 37 Total Interior Cleaner on all the vinyl, rubber, and plastic components, mainly the dashboard, the steering wheel, and the door panels before I do the leather seats. Now, the reason I do, I do the leather seats last is because, as you can see, I'm really sweaty. Um, it's early September here in Florida when I'm filming this. It's probably 90 degrees in my garage. What I don't want to do is clean the leather make it look perfect, and then get in here with my shorts on and my sweaty legs and my sweaty arms and get it all dirty again. So I'll save the leather for last. So anyway, take my total interior cleaner, which this guy is safe for practically every surface inside your vehicle, and I'll spray it directly on a microfiber towel, and I'll simply wipe the areas to be cleaned. And this is a popular among enthusiasts and detailers because it's safe, it's effective, and it has virtually no odor and again, it's safe on pretty much every interior surface. And it actually leaves behind an antibacterial coating that helps resist buildup of germs and bacteria, which is especially important now in the day and age of COVID and monkeypox and all these other viruses that keep popping up. So it helps with that too. Put a protective coating on the surface. And real simple, spray it on and wipe. There's not a whole lot of science behind it. I do have a uh, Wheel Woolies Boar's Hair Brush right here, and I use this guy mainly for the detail cleaning, like in the cup holder, um, or if this air vent was really dirty, I'd spray some cleaner on here and really get in there. But to be honest with you, um, using the blowout gun plus the vacuum with all the different attachments, it took out everything, so it did a really great job. So this is where I'd use the Boris airbrush to clean the nooks and crannies of the interior. I'll take my total interior cleaner and I'll spray directly into the bristles and I'll simply agitate. Now, most vehicles have some type of rubber liner that's inside of the um, cup holders. This vehicle does not for some reason. So if your vehicle has that, then take them out and clean them outside of there. But uh, otherwise take the bristle, bristles on the brush and gently clean. And the goal is to simply go over the material to get out dirt from the cracks and crevices, an area where a towel wouldn't reach. And you are not trying to saturate the material with cleaner, which is why you spray it directly onto the brush instead of the material itself. And then simply wipe it off. And this looks as good as new. All the dirt and the grime and the um, the cracks and the crevices are now clean thanks to the Boris hairbrush, which is all natural and you don't have to worry about it scratching these delicate materials like this piano black plastic. And then take your towel and dry everything off the best you can.
The next thing I like to clean is the steering wheel. I've used total interior cleaner on virtually everything else, the rubber, the plastics, the dashboards. I saved the seats for last, like I mentioned. For the steering wheel, which is leather on this vehicle, I'll use McKee's 37 Leather Shampoo 7030. This is 70% cleaner, 30% conditioner. I'll use a brand new towel for this, and this will clean any kind of skin oil or suntan lotion or body lotion, whatever's on the steering wheel, it'll remove it and help preserve the leather because dirt and oil over time will wreak havoc on your leather steering wheel. And this leaves the steering wheel with a brand new, supple feeling, soft leather feel, and it will not be greasy or slippery to the touch. It'll look, feel, and it'll even smell brand new. And with this being the GLI model, it has this beautiful red stitching. You have to be extremely careful what you use to clean steering wheels like this because an all-purpose cleaner, which you hear a lot of people talk about, can actually cause damage to the stitching where a dedicated leather cleaner, that's not going to be an issue. So what's a lot more expensive than a dedicated leather cleaner is a brand new steering wheel. They're not cheap. Take it on, I'll spray it on the towel and simply massage it into the steering wheel. And it doesn't take long. The steering wheel automatically, uh, or right away, it looks better, it feels better, it's not tacky. It has a nice matte finish. And it's kind of hard to see, but it picked up a lot of dirt that was on the steering wheel that would cause damage over time. The next step is to condition all the rubber and plastic interior components with McKee's 37 Graphene Interior Shield. This is a graphene infused interior protectant that gives it protection against UVA and UVB rays, along with the oil and anything else that comes off your skin and lands on the material over time. This dries to the touch, it gives it a nice low gloss satin sheen, and it lasts a long time. Take the product, shake it well, and I like to apply it using a microfiber applicator pad here, and I'll spray it directly into the applicator pad to avoid any overspray. And this one bottle will last you a long, long time. Take the product, you spray it on there, and you'll simply distribute over your interior, and it smells absolutely phenomenal. And you can adjust the level of, level of shine by how much product you apply. If you want a high gloss shine, you can simply apply more. If you want more of a low gloss satin sheen, which is what I prefer and my wife prefers, I'm going to take a microfiber towel and I'm going to buff off any excess. But this goes on nice and even. It is not a petroleum based product. It is water based, but it does have the graphene, which makes it last a long time. It really sticks to the material and it's safe for your rubber, your plastic, your vinyl, your leather. Take your microfiber towel and simply wipe off the excess unless you desire a higher gloss shine. If you want a higher gloss shine, just leave it and walk away. It'll dry to the touch. The next step, and the last step, which is my favorite, is cleaning and conditioning the leather upholstery. Now, the leather in this vehicle, it's black in color, it's perforated, the seats are heated, as well as air conditioned. So what that means is there's a heating element in here that when activated will warm the seat to keep your butt nice and warm on a cold day, and it's air conditioned, so there's actual fans down here in the foam material that blow air up through the perforated sections to keep your butt cool on a hot summer day. Now, I'm not really concerned about that all this much when cleaning because I'm not saturating the surface. It's not like I'm taking a bucket of cleaner and dumping it on the seat. 
I'm spraying a fine mist of cleaner directly on the leather, and then I'm going to use a specialized upholstery brush designed specifically for leather to agitate the cleaner. Now, following the trend of using a dedicated product for each respective material, McKee's 37 Leather Shampoo 7030 is safe and effective for the leather upholstery in your vehicle. Again, use high quality products because what's more expensive than a bottle of leather cleaner is a new leather seat. It's not cheap. Now, a lot of guys will tell you to use an all purpose cleaner. Yes, it's going to work, absolutely. However, in the long run, you have to be extremely careful because if they're not used properly, they will be detrimental to both the actual material, it'll cause it to delaminate, as well as the stitching, which it'll cause it to degrade. That's not an issue with leather shampoo. Take your cleaner and spray it on the material. Again, I'm not saturating the surface. Take your brush, spray some cleaner directly into it, and then agitate. This brush is safe for the leather. It's designed specifically for it. It's not going to cause any damage to the stitching or to the perforated sections. And the bristles are concentrated enough to where it's, they're tightly packed together. And even though it's really soft, it's still effective for scrubbing. Work it in. And then take your microfiber towel and wipe off the excess cleaner. Now it's really important, again, not to sound like a broken record, use a high quality towel. Because what will happen is if you buy a big bag of towels from the wholesale club, these towels, though inexpensive, they'll actually uh, bleed dye and the dye will transfer from the towel to the seat. So what I mean is that if this was a cheap towel, which it's not, this orange dye would transfer from here to the material when it interacts with the cleaner. Buy high quality towels, like from McKees37.com. Wipe off the excess cleaner and right away you'll notice a dramatic improvement in the way the seat looks. It's soft, it's supple, it smells great, and it looks brand new. Maintaining your vehicle using leather shampoo will help keep the seats looking this way even when the vehicle has 100,000 miles on it. Now I could stop here if I wanted to because leather shampoo does have a conditioner component. However, I want to really protect the seat so I'm going to follow with leather conditioner after I repeat this process over the rest of the interior. The last and final step for this interior detail is to apply McKee's 37 Leather Conditioner. This protects the seat in addition to the conditioning agents that are found in leather shampoo. It restores the natural pH of the leather, keeps it soft, supple, and flexible, and gives it UVA and UVB protection. Best of all, it gives it a barrier so any type of oils from your skin or suntan lotion or food spills, anything like that, it'll come off the leather much easier before it causes any damage. This product is water-based, there's no petroleum oil, and it's not going to cause any harm to the stitching. It's actually beneficial for the stitching, plus it smells great. Take the product, shake it well, and you'll apply it using a microfiber applicator pad. Apply the product directly to the applicator pad, and since these seats are perforated, what I'll do is I'll use the applicator pad to spread out the product. That way, I'm not forcing the conditioner into the perforated sections. It does not take a whole lot of product. Apply a nice thin coat. One bottle will last you many, 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 many years. And besides your automobile, you can use this on your um, leather handbags, your leather upholstery inside your house, and pretty much anything else that's leather. So you apply a thin coat, and the first thing you'll notice is that it's not streaky, it's not smeary, it's not oily, and that it smells absolutely phenomenal. The inside of this modestly priced Volkswagen will smell like a Bentley by the time I'm finished treating all the leather upholstery. After you apply it, let it absorb for a couple seconds, or better yet, a minute, and then take a microfiber towel and wipe off any excess. And again, no streaks, no smears. The excess comes off very easily. If your vehicle has older leather upholstery, maybe you've never conditioned it, or you just bought a used car with leather, it would be a good idea to apply a couple coats of leather conditioner and let it sit for 20, 30 minutes before you wipe off the excess. That way, the leather really absorbs it and it nourishes it. So, feels great. It's nice and smooth, soft and supple, and it has UV protection. So I'm going to repeat this process over the rest of the interior, including the center armrest there. 
And that'll conclude the interior detail for this 2021 Volkswagen Jetta GLI Autobahn. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments box below. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like videos like this, and give me a thumbs up. Take care, and God bless.